Yeah, so all, all the motors that Ed has spoken to up to this point are um, AC motors, so they're, they're powered by AC current, and, and pretty much all the motors we're going to see in high performance or, or high, uh, the need for high efficiency are going to be AC motors. Um, and what I have drawn on the screen here is, is on the right-hand side, I have a, a little diagram of a two-pole, three-phase motor. Um, so two-pole means that in, in the inner circle of my diagram, I have a red bar and a blue bar. Those are our north and south magnets. So those are our magnets on the rotor. And then around the stator, so the outside part, I have these circles that indicate A plus, A minus, so the north pole and the south pole of the A phase, B minus, B plus, so the northern pole of the B phase, and C minus C plus, the north and south pole of the C phase. And when I say they have X AC excitation, on the left-hand side of the screen where I have my three sine waves, those colors coordinate with the A, B, and C phases. So those magnets on the, on the rotor, they're going to follow, so the north magnet on the rotor is going to follow the south magnet on the stator. And as phase A has the most powerful south magnet, so when that, that sine wave is at a peak, it's going to follow the A phase. And it's going to gracefully hand it off to the B phase, then gracefully hand it off to the C phase. We're going to create a rotation around the, the motor. And this is, this is really a necessary explanation to understand motor control, because you, you just have to understand that there's a magnet on the stator following a magnet on the rotor. Now, naturally, this is going to get complicated, but we just focus on, on the point I'm going to reiterate this probably a dozen times. The rotor magnet follows the stator magnet. And with that, we'll, we'll jump into a little bit of uh, motor control. So, Ed, next slide, please. So now we would love to power our motors on the purest of AC signals. Um, but these EV motors have to be powered for, by a battery. Um, there's no AC energy storage. Um, and batteries are, are very easy to for us to create. We've had batteries since, um, you know, ancient times. Um, so we have a battery that has this DC electrical power. Now, how do we get from DC to AC? Well, we have this clever um, piece of circuitry called an inverter, where it takes that DC voltage and current, and using a series of switches turned on and off in a strategic pattern, we're going to replicate an AC sine wave. And this is really cool. Um, so we're going to turn on and off the switch, and that's going to create an AC voltage. This AC voltage is going to come into the electric motor, and it's going to get filtered into an AC current, and then AC magnetics. So we're going to get this sinusoidal magnet. Now, anything that's happening in that inverter is becoming magnet, and this will become very important in, in the future slides. But that magnet in the, in the machine is then getting transferred into torque and speed, and this torque and speed are creating noise and vibration. Uh, and this magnet in the motor is, is creating noise and vibration. So that's kind of the path, is we have this DC current getting chopped up by switches turning on and off, to high frequency voltage, to high frequency current, to magnetics, to torque, to noise, to vibration. And the really important thing here is that that inverter is kind of the conductor of the orchestra. That inverter is saying, okay, I'm turning on this voltage, I'm turning off this voltage. I'm turning on this magnet, I'm turning off this magnet. I'm creating torque, I'm not creating torque. So the inverter, this is what we're controlling. We have a computer that's telling this inverter what to do. And that's what we mean when we refer to it as the control. So we're going to find that we can do a lot with this inverter. And Ed, if you'd move to the next slide, please. So again, always keep in mind, the rotor follows the excitation and the harmonics of the stator. So in the top right corner, I have a little picture of our inverter. This is a circuit model of an inverter. And we can see there's three switches on top and then three on the bottom. And three of these six switches are going to be on at any given time. We're going to get current that flows from the top into the motor and then back. So this is really cool. But these switches, the, the, these are on or off. So we're going to have voltage on for a period, voltage off for a period. And what we have uh, on the screen in the middle, um, in the blue we have our voltage waveform. In the red we have our current. 
But we can see on the left-hand side, we have this very short pulse. And then as we go towards the middle, these pulses get progressively longer. And then as we go back towards the right, these, these pulses get progressively shorter. This is, this is what we can do with discrete switches. We can turn them on and off. Now that motor, that motor acts as a, a filter. It's, it's an electrical filter, it's an inductor. It's taking that voltage waveform and filtering it into that red current. And we can see that while the switch is on, we're charging up that current, while the switch is off, we're discharging that current. Charging, discharging, charging, discharging. So we get that very spiky sine wave. But it is a sine wave. And if we remember, our motor needs AC excitation. We need that sine wave. So this is really cool, but this tells us a couple of things. One, using these discrete switches, we can power this motor. Two, this current wave is gonna have a lot of harmonics, which from the previous slide we remember, harmonics and current are gonna equal harmonics and magnetics. We're gonna have a magnet that looks like that spiky sine wave. That magnet equals torque. We're gonna to have a torque that has a torsional vibration because of this inverter. So any harmonics in the, in the stator or in the current are gonna get transferred to that shaft. Um, now this inverter featured here is a particularly low switching frequency that has that high, um, high, or high amplitude of harmonic, but it's gonna exist in all sy systems. And this switching frequency that we're turning on and off this inverter is gonna be somewhere in the two kilohertz to 60 kilohertz range, depending on your application. Now, some of you might recognize that 2 kilohertz is absolutely in the audible range, <laughs> and a decent amount of that is in the audible range. So we have to consider that this inverter itself is also going to produce some noise. And this high-frequency current in the, in the stator is going to expand and contract the stator itself magnetically. So you might get noise produced by that, in addition to what's being caused by um, that harmonic torque that, that is getting produced. So again, just reiterating, the rotor, the magnet on the rotor is following that current on the stator. So we're following all those harmonics. Go ahead, next slide, please. So there's, there's a variety of control techniques, and the one we just showed is um, a PWM excitation, pulse width modulation. Now, we, we've, de we've definitely established that the inverter control will affect mechanical resonances, and I, I just really want to hit that home that there's different control techniques, so different ways we can turn that inverter on and off, and it's got different effects. So just keep in mind that torque follows the current excitation. So in my picture, I have a pulse, mo pulse width modulated signal on the left-hand side, where we see those thick blue triangles. Blue is our voltage in this instance. And that's a pulse width modulated signal that's running at 13 kilohertz, uh, so turning on and off very quickly. And this is going, being fed into the motor. This high frequency signal is being fed into the motor. And that motor, the inductor in the motor, is filtering that. And we're creating this nice sinusoidal current in the red, where we see this just very nice sine wave. There's probably some harmonics, but, but not too bad. And, and, and this is great. It's a nice smooth sine wave. And if we go to the, the graph below that, the torque in pink, we can see the torque. It's got a little action. It's moving around a little bit. Um, but not a ton. And, and, you know, we've got some ripple effects that's probably caused by some of the harmonics, but, but it's not crazy. Now we have a six step modulation on the right hand side. And this is the same motor, same inverter, and we just flipped a switch in software. Now this six step, this is the most simple control we can really realistically do with, a, with an inverter. Um, and it's operating at 600 hertz. And we can see that the sine wave now in blue is, is very block-like, it's just a series of blocks. Um, and this is because it's only turning on, on and off periodically. Okay, now we look at the current. Now again, we're feeding this lower frequency signal into the filter. This filter is a, a, a low pass filter. So we're filtering out all the high frequency stuff, but it's not, that 600 Hertz isn't quite below that filter constant. So we see these spikes in the current. We can see that this current sine wave is, is sinusoidal, um, but there's a lot of action. That amplitude has changed. Um, we're adding harmonic content to it. If you, if you got an eye for that, there's a big fifth harmonic there. Um, 
And, and that's going to be translated into magnet, which is going to be translated into torque. And if we look at the torque on the bottom, we can see that, I mean, we have negative torque swings. We have this big amplitude change. This is uh, quite the dramatic signal we have. Um, and this is absolutely going to get transferred to gearboxes. It's going to have torsional vibrations in the shaft, and, and this is going to create noise and vibration elements. So our torque is following that current excitation, and our control technique will affect what that output is. Our voltage waveforms, um, you know, they, they're variable. We, we can change what they are in software, and, and these effects are going to affect noise and vibration downstream. Next slide. So just a quick review on, on inverters and excitation. Electric vehicles um, are powered by DC batteries, uh, and the traction motors require AC excitation. So we have this kind of mismatch. We have a high-frequency inverter, the thing that switches on and off, um, which is necessary to convert DC energy into AC energy. So we can take that battery and make it into AC current. We're using an inverter to do that. It would be great if this inverter could create a pure sine wave, but, but these are solid state transistors. They have on states and off states, um, and we need to operate within that realm. So we need to put in these square waves and filter them down to be, to be real sine waves. So these on and off states are magnetically filtered into sine waves, but they do have that harmonic content. And that harmonic content is going to manifest itself as torque ripple, as noise, as vibration. Um, so I hope